Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my all-time favorites from 2018. I almost said 2019. 2018 and I'm so excited. So this video took me a minute to get put up because I had to replace one of my favorites so I was waiting for it to come in. This is going to be a try on style of my year favorites and I'll talk a little about why I like each one of them. But I saw this idea from Angelica Nightquest which that is not how you pronounce her name. <laughs> she is Swedish, but she is one of my favorite YouTubers. And I really liked this idea of trying on the favorites as you put them on. It kind of limits you to, to not picking out so many, but really refining what your favorites are for the year. And she, I believe, said that she got this idea from Samantha March. So I will link both of their channels down below if you want to check theirs out. But I am going to go ahead and jump right in because I'm sure this is going to be a longer video since I am trying everything on for it. There are some categories where I do have more than one favorite. Um, my first one, I'm going to start with primer and I'm using the Cover FX Blurring Primer. I actually got this in, what did I get this in? Either a BoxyCharm or a FabFitFun box. But I love it and I'll tell you why. It's like a mix of, it's got some similarities to, and I kind of push it in as I use it, especially around my nose area where I have more pores. I think I took too much out this time. It's kind of a mix between the pore professional in terms of its pore filling, but it also has got, I can't even think of another one like this. It's got a moussey consistency, so it's not so slippery like the pore professional. So it sticks to my skin. So if you have oiler oilier skin. My guess is the professional does not work for you because it absolutely does not work for me. It just kind of like slides right off. This one, like the makeup actually sticks to and typically my makeup doesn't slide off of my skin throughout the day. I think part of that is because of the foundation I wear as well which I'll get into. Uh, I always let this primer kind of set in to my skin before I get into my makeup, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I let that soak in for a while, so the next step that I'm going to do is concealer. Obviously I need some of that today. So I've got this little like patch growing on this side of my nose. So my favorite, favorite concealer without a doubt this year was the Collab what is it called? No Flaws Cream Concealer. So it comes in this stick formula here. I really prefer stick concealers when it comes to coverage on my face. I think they have a little more coverage than a liquid concealer. And yeah, I really like this one. I think this is a Sigma brush to just kind of pat this in before I go in with my foundation. So you can see that has got pretty good coverage, but it also doesn't end up looking cakey or anything on the skin, which I like. And then next I go in with my foundation, which I think you guys know what my favorite is of the year, if you've been with me. It is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation, and I put it on typically with my favorite sponge, which I have lost. The number of things that I have lost is ridiculous. I don't know where these things go, <laughs> but I'm putting it on with my second favorite sponge that I tried this year, and that is the Morphe one. I'll put the L'Oreal one up here so you guys can see what it looks like. It's a pink one. It's $7.99. You can get it buy one, get one half price at Ulta. I really like it. So while I'm doing this, if you guys did not see, this month I am celebrating my year anniversary, which is really also exciting because it's January, and January is kind of like fresh start, new things, exciting new chapters. So I did just post my one year giveaway up on my channel. There's going to be two, there's going to be, there is going to be two winners. I'll put a link right here if you guys want to check that out. Um, and then I also in there talked about my YouTube goals for 2019. So that was an exciting video for me to make as well. The next thing that I have is the thing I was waiting to get in. And it is the Boing Concealer from Benefit. So here's what it looks like now. This is not what my jar looked like. So I don't know if this is reformulated or just repackaged, but it is now called the Boing Brightening Concealer. And it is the one that has the salmon color to it. So I will update 
you guys. I'll probably put that in like a first shot my stash just so I can let you guys know about it. So there, I mean, you can already see a difference. So one reason I really like this is because it is, it is creamy. It's not too thick and it's not too thin. So it provides some good color correcting and coverage. I think if they get too thin, then you don't get enough coverage. And if they're too thick, they can look cakey. And if you have some fine line issues under your eyes, like myself, you don't want anything that's looking cakey under your eyes. For concealer, I do use a bit of concealer. I don't use a ton under my eyes, but I do use some to kind of blend that color correcting in and then just give a little brightness to this area right in here. Not so much that it looks ridiculous. And I have two concealers that I absolutely love. This is my third repurchase of the Smashbox Studio Skin Waterproof Concealer. And I use it in Fair. And then another one that I tried this year and love is the Ulta Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. This is my second purchase of this one. So when I do my under eye concealer, like I kind of start, I don't put it directly under my eyes. I just do a little in this area here, not directly in that eye area. And then as I blend it, I blend it up and out. So I don't get too much creasing in there. So that it just gives like a little brightness, but not so much that it looks obnoxious. If you know what I mean. And then for a setting powder, my favorite, favorite, favorite this year, and I used a lot for under my eyes this year, was the Becca Under Eye. It looks like this. Under Eye Brightening Setting Powder. So I have to be honest, I used all of this up. So I put some Derma Blend in this one so I don't actually have this product. So per my low buy rules, I need to go, go through some of the ones I have before I repurchase. But that will probably be a repurchase in 2019, and I'll probably get it with my um, Alter Reward points. So the Derma Blend one is okay, but that Beck one is my absolute favorite. So I'm sorry that I don't have that to try on today, but I do have the container that it comes in. It just is, it, it just works so well. So with the fine lines, you have to be careful of what setting powder you use, you're using. It has to be a very, very thin one. And that one works amazing for brightening and setting without creasing into fine lines. So then I go in and do my powders on my face. For bronzer, it is absolutely the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula. I know some people hate this smell, but I actually love it. I've hit pan on it uh, a bit. So I, I cannot repurchase this because I have bronzers I need to go through. But this is for sure my favorite. I just think that the color... There's something about the color that makes it, it's like it's not too cool toned, it's not too warm toned, it's just a really good neutral color bronzer, so you can use it for uh, contouring or bronzing up. I don't do like full on contour, I just pinch, pinch my bronzer brush and I do a little line right here where it would be because I want there to be a little bit of dimension there but I don't need it to look crazy or anything like that. I want a natural looking contour and then I do my chin area and my neck and then just give some color to my forehead. Um, and then sometimes I'll pinch it and just do a little on my side nose area as well. And for blush, I actually have three blushes that I tried this year. And they are ones that I continually go back to and absolutely love. So this one is in Vintage Rouge. And it is just, it's just like a perfect cheek color, rosy cheek color. You've been outside color blush, I think. So you can see it just gives a little, I just love it. I love it. I know a lot of people loved this one this year as well. And it's Physician's Formula, so it's not super expensive. And then I was really into coral blushes this year. So I also have two coral blushes that I loved this year, kept returning to. The first one is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. The lid is broken, so it's got some chips in it. But here's what it looks like. It's just a really pretty coral blush with a little bit of luminosity to it. And then the other one is this Morphe Blush Trio in Pop of Coral. 
This one also broke. Boy, I have got, I'm kind of rough on my makeup, I guess. Um, so this one is really nice because it has got three different shades in it. So you actually could use this all year round and have a good option to use for your blushes. They have lots of different colors. The coral's my favorite. I was really into coral tones this year. So I guess I was ahead of the game on that Pantone color of the year. So I have three highlighters for 2018 that I love so much. The first one is this Master Chrome uh, Metallic Highlighter in Molten Gold from Maybelline. This one, it, it is just one that I reach for all the time. I think it is beautiful and I absolutely think that it is a dupe for the Ofra Rodeo Drive. I have both of them. I think they look exactly the same on the face. And I've also heard this is a dupe for the Ambrizi highlighter as well. I have not tried them side by side though, so I don't know that for sure, but I definitely think it's a dupe for that Ofra Rodeo Drive. Another one that I love is, this is so sad. This actually came to me like that with this all broken up, so I just got rid of it, the bronzer. But this is the e.l.f. Heart Defense Bronzer Blush Duo in Coffees and Cream. And there is something about this highlight. It has got like the prettiest pink shift to it. And I love it. So there is that one. Let me swatch this one for you guys too. I think a lot of people have tried that. So there is the Molten Gold one. The last one I'm going to use today, and it is like my saddest little baby thing ever. This is... Uh, Pie in the Sky from Touch of Glam. Look what happened to it. My daughter totally dug into that, so I had to salvage what I could and and repress it. But I'm so sad because there's so little left of it. So this is what I'm going to use today. It did look like a pizza when I got it. She does the most beautiful... Whoa. So pressing it... Oh, I hope I didn't ruin it. So pressing it has made it super more pigmented. I f oh my gosh. So I had to wipe some of that off. Pressing that must have made it way more pigmented. I don't know. But I highly recommend highlighters from Touch of Glam Beauty. She is an Etsy shop. Um, I will link it down below. And then I also do have a review up on my channel. It might be a first impressions. But, uh, spoiler alert, I love them all. And I will link that if you guys want to check out the ones that I have. They all have their own unique shade to them. Um, but they're all beautiful in their own way. So that one is a little more champagne-y. And then there's a pink one and a goldish one. So I love all of those. And next I'm going to do powder. And this is like my all-time favorite powder. Not just my favorite powder this year. This is the Smashbox Photo Filter Creamy Powder Foundation. I got it in number two. And this is probably my third replacement of this, I think. And I only use this to set my nose area. and my forehead and chin. Depending on the foundation I'm wearing with this L'Oreal one, that's the only area I need to set. I do not double up on powders on like my cheek area, which is why I do my bronzer, blush, and highlighter first. No matter what foundation I have, that is used to set that area. Otherwise, I find it just looks kind of cakey. So that's a little tip if you're finding like some cakiness in this area is just use those color products to set that area and then use your powder to set everywhere else on your face. Moving on to brows, there was definitely some clear cut winners this year when it comes to brows. And that is, I have a replacement in this one, the Goof Proof Brow Pencil. I have it in three and I'll tell you why I love this one. I don't mind a skinny brow, brow pencil. I actually use them quite a bit, but this one has got got a spoolie on the end which is actually pretty soft and nice. It's got this triangle little area here which makes it really easy to do the brows but it's also pretty creamy so it's not so stiff that you have to like drag it along and it ends up getting darker than you want it. So I just really like this brow pencil or whatever you want to call it and I just fill mine in like I... I'm not so serious about my brows. <laughs> I do already have up. 
Uh, there were too many lip products and palettes that I tried in 2018 to just put one or two in this video. So I already have up my video with my top lip products and top eyeshadow palettes for 2018. So I will, if I have room, I'll link them up in the iCards. Otherwise, I'll stick them down in the description box. So you see how easy that is to fill in. And it just looks, I think it looks really nice. Uh, natural, but but not so natural like this one. You can see that was so easy. This is probably the easiest brow product that I used to fill in my brows. And then I do have a brow setter that I used. I used the Anastasia one for so long because everybody said it was so good. And this year I got this little sample in something and tried it and it is so much better. It's the Ready Set Brow from Benefit. I actually purchased a full size. Um, when it was in the 21 Days of Beauty because I liked it so much. This one, it's like, it's like glue, but not glue that looks like your brows are glued. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's why I like it. Honestly, that Anastasia one doesn't really do much for my brows. They don't really stay in place. And then I think there are some that are like so much that your brows look horrible. But I think this one, they can look natural but still stay in place. So that's why I really like this one. Alright, so for eyeshadow primer, I've got the Ulta Matte Eye Primer in Nude. I really like this one because, first of all, it, it dries a little matte. So it's like a mix between, between just priming your eyes and priming your eyes and setting your eyes. But without putting powder on, that's going to make the shades fade away, fade out. That's going to fade the shades a little bit. And I also like this one because it cancels out some of that veininess on the eyes. It reminds me a lot of the Urban Decay uh, nude, matte nude one. I'm not sure what that one's called. I do also have that one. But this one is the cheaper version of it. So um, even if I had a favorite that is more expensive this year, um, I'm, I'm going to show you the cheaper version. So if there, there is a more expensive version in there, then there wasn't a cheaper version that I liked. But, you know, like I really like the Molten Gold, so obviously I like the Ofra Rodeo Drive one, but I'm going to recommend to you the cheaper version. I'm going to go ahead and put on a nude lip today. So the Lip Stories from Sephora were in my top lips of 2018. So I am going to pop on, I think this is, this is Landing in Shanghai. This is one of their cream formulas. So for eyes today, I think I'm going to do the Weekend Festival from BH Cosmetics and the Norvina palette from Anastasia. Both of these were in my top five for 2018, but you will have to check out that video because there were also about seven honorable mentions after my top fives. So I tried a lot in 2018 and I loved a lot of my palettes that I tried, so I couldn't narrow it down to just five. So what should we start with? Maybe I want to do something with the golds in here. You know what? Let's do a turquoise and gold eye today. I don't know if I've done that before. So I am going to start with, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of, of uh, talking about the eyes. But I'll show you what colors I'm using. So this is Palooza right here. So I'm just popping that in the transition area. I'm going to use a little bit of this trance color here to to pop that in the outer V. It does have a little shimmer to it, but it's going to be all right. I'm not doing like a, a real serious eye look today. And then I'm going to take a little bit of, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit of hipster right here and just deepen up this outer portion a bit. So I've got that part done. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Eccentric from the ABH palette and I'm going to pop that in this crease area right here just going up to the blue. So then I'm going to go, I think I'm going to do the rose gold today uh, on the rest of the lid and then I'll just pop a little bit of Dreamer here on the inner corner. Oh my gosh, guys, oh, these foil shades from this palette are so beautiful. Very, very crumbly and almost, they're kind of like, 
I don't know what a good word is for it. They really move around inside the palette. But how beautiful is this? See, this is why I like combining palettes because I would have never created something like this using just one palette. All right, so now I need to go ahead and blend these together here where they meet. So I'm gonna take what's left on this brush and then I'm gonna take this little brush I was using the blue on and just pat right over. Just to create a blended effect right where those shades are meeting. I'm gonna do the other eye, I'm gonna do my lower lash line, just mimic some of the colors, and then I'm gonna tell you guys about my favorite liners. So I did the lower lash line, I just used the eccentric shade from the ABH palette and smudged it all along the lower lash line, and then I mimicked that blue shade on the lower lash line just in the outer portion. So I have got <laughs> three kinds of color gel liners that I fell in love with this year and they all deserve a mention here. They are the LA Girl Glide Gel Liners. These are so inexpensive and they are so beautiful and pigmented and lasting. I love those. I don't think I'm going to use one of those today though. And the NYX Slide On Glide On Gel Liners. Also love those. I think I have more of these somewhere but Love those as well. And then I'm sure you guys know this is going to pop up here. The ColourPop Gel Liners. I am so glad there is an affordable brand that has beautiful matte gel liners. Because every other line that is affordable, they all, even all of these, they all have the shimmer to it. So it's really hard to find a more affordable line of matte gel liners. And ColourPop has done that. And they are very pigmented and last a long time. I do go in with two swipes with these. I'm not sure what color I want to use today. I think I'm going to go in with the royal blue one from the LA Girl. So you can see like that is pigmented. It shows up. I forgot to pop an inner corner highlight on so let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to tell you guys about my favorite liquid liners of the year. Three made it into that category. The first one, which I can't find, is the Lorac Front of the Line Pro Liquid Liner. That has been a favorite of mine since I started doing liquid liner. So probably for five years. I don't know how many times I've replaced it. It is a pen formula and it is, it is perfect. If you want to try one and you want the best that is it. I have never had an issue with it. It doesn't bleed. It doesn't stain. It creates a really nice point to it. I love, love, love that one. And then I found two other ones this year that I really like as well. And they are the It Cosmetics Superhero Liner. This one is very similar to the Lorac one. I'm not sure that I found a bit of a difference yet, but I had just started using this one this year. So I've got I've got to use it a little while longer. This is my first one, so I need to see the lasting, the, like this, the lasting power of that liner. How, like how, how long that liner is going to stay good for. And then the other one is the Revolution mm, Flick. Is it the Flick liner? It doesn't stay on here. So this is a felt tip liner, and I don't typically like felt tip liners, but this one is really good, and it gets a very, very slim point on um, on your liner if you would like to do that. This one is a brush tip, so there's what that one looks like. Today, I'm going to use the It Cosmetics one. So when I do liquid liner, I always start with the inner corner and go out and then bring it down like that. I cannot talk when I'm doing liquid liner. Okay, so I've got my liner on. For mascara, three definitely stood out to me this year. The first one is the e.l.f. Mineral Infused Mascara. I really like that one for lengthening. It doesn't clump. It stays on. It doesn't feel like you're wearing mascara. And another one I really liked is the Kush Mascara from Milk Makeup. I probably won't replace this just because of its price point. I do really like this one, and I think it's a really good mascara. It is also really nice for under the lower lash line, which I have a really hard time finding something that lengthens my lashes at all under the lower lash line because I have like three 
one millimeter lashes. And then probably my favorite mascara this year is from Grand. Is it from Grand? Grand Mascara Lash Boosting Formula. I actually got this in a boxy charm, and I love it. It gives great length and volume. For lashes, I've got a couple lashes, um, but definitely the Duo Lash Glue in the green tube. It's got a brush applicator. So here is what the Duo Lash Glue looks like, and mine's getting a little chunky here. It's just got this little brush tip applicator that makes it really easy to apply. It stays on good, but then it also comes off easy, so bonus. I've actually got three lashes. This was like the year, or I should say the past two months, of me trying lashes. So I've actually tried out quite a few, and I've got some favorites. This one is from a BoxyCharm, and they are the Lashaholic Luxury Lashes in the Instagram style. Um, and here's what they look like on the inside. So they're just really pretty. They have some length because of like the every other ones, but they're not like so out of control, I guess I would say. Really easy to apply as well. And another pair of lashes that I really like. Okay, so I actually tried, everyone talks about the House of Lashes Iconics and Iconic Lights. I am not as big a fan of those because they are huge, but I do really like these. Uh, what is the style? Temptress. Here's what they look like. So they they are big, but they are not as big as the other ones, and they are a little more not natural looking, but more in how lashes would look. I don't know how to describe it. Here they are. I really like those, and the. Other ones that I love, you guys are probably going to know these two if you have been around, are the Ardell Natural Variety Pack Lashes. I like all the lashes that come in here. Okay, these are not Ardell's. I'm trying to change the shape of that band. Um, but the other three are Ardell ones. They are so good. They are easy to apply. They last a long time. I don't... I'm going to use... I think I'm going to use these today, and this will be like my 11th time using these lashes. But they form really nice to your eye shape. It's like the band is the perfect thickness and thinness to it that it forms really nice to your eye shape. I have got lashes on, so now for my favorite setting spray of 2018, and I did use quite a bit of them, but the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist definitely won out. Uh, this one, it's so beautiful to apply. <laughs> um, it just goes on like the finest mist, so it's not going to interfere with how your makeup looks. But I will say that in 2019, I will be doing a more in-depth study of setting sprays and which ones really work and how long they work and things like that. So that will be coming, but not for a while in 2019. And I've got to give a mention to my e.l.f. makeup remover pen. This, this is an all-time favorite of mine forever and ever. If you don't have this, you need it. It is so amazing. It's like a little makeup wipe in the form of a pen for like fine little detail things around the eyes. I absolutely love it. So definitely recommend giving that a try. They're only $3. So I think that's everything, guys. <laughs> That took a long time, mostly because I had to keep telling my kids to stop yelling in the background. So if you heard anything, I tried to edit it as best I could. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this yearly favorites of 2018. I would love to hear what some of your favorites were. Don't forget to enter the giveaway before you leave. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys probably tomorrow. Bye!